Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship, the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Also to those who may be receiving our live stream, Pastor Peter and other members of Prince of Peace are at the ELCA Youth Assembly. Today we remember them in our prayers. I'm Paul Roram, also a pastor of the New Jersey Synod in retirement and filling in from time to time. The Gospel today tells us of the death of John the Baptist and opens up for us his entire life and ministry and message. Words that we have taken into our liturgy every Sunday. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Yesterday's shocking events, the combination of gun violence and our political strife, also affect the prayers today for individuals and for our society as a whole. And John's message, as we take it into our liturgy, means that certain words we say or we sing every Sunday can take on a special intensity and application, whether to ourselves on individual occasions or to us as a society as a whole. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Grant us peace. That's for later in the service, for now we begin with the confession and forgiveness. Please rise. In the name of God, the Creator, and of God, the Son, and of God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy, and consolation. Come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Savior and Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. The Lord's praise shall continually be in my mouth. Lord, bless the reading of your word. Make it come alive in our midst. Amen. The first reading is from the seventh chapter of Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees, and the Lord took from me and the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Word of God, word of life. Let us read Uh, Psalm 85 responsively. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, 
and shall prepare for God a pathway. The second reading is from the first chapter of Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to Mark in the sixth chapter. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the Baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, It is Elijah, and others said, It is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. 
Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. This particular gospel section is a gory, ugly, sinful scene. It's lurid in its drama, even operatic. In fact, there has been an opera based on the legendary traditional name of the daughter. Salome. But it opens up for us the entire life and ministry and message of John the Baptist. For he was always pointing to Christ. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This started even before his birth. His elderly father, Zechariah, received a message that he and Elizabeth, also past the childbearing age, would have a child, a son. They should name him John. For he will prepare his people for the coming of the Lord. When Elizabeth, six months pregnant, received her cousin Mary come to visit her, she said that the babe in her womb leaped for joy at the sound of the greeting from the mother of the Lord. Even before his birth, in the prediction and in the womb, he points to Christ. So too, when they're both grown, after the two births, six months apart, the one we just commemorated, June 24th, St. John's Day, Midsummer Night, do the math, six months later, December 24th, the birth of Jesus. There too, the birth of one pointing to the arrival of the other. And when they were grown, the pattern resumes. John is baptizing for repentance at the River Jordan. Preaching repentance to one and all. And indeed, baptizing Jesus, as we have depicted on our same glass. When Jesus returned from the temptations in the devil, we read that when John saw him, he said to his disciples, Behold, look, a Lamb of God who takes away the sin." world. In fact, it says that two of his disciples, on the spot, took John's words to heart and followed Jesus, becoming his disciples. One of them was Andrew, who in turn told his brother Simon. And John had referred his disciples to become Jesus. The pattern even continues when he was in prison. 
not the portion in, in this gospel passage, but in another part of scripture, it says that when John was in prison, he sent his disciples to Jesus to inquire of him, to learn of him. And we know that many of them did become Jesus' disciples. John's own disciples continue in the story you heard that they came to bury him. And in the book of Acts, we read there are still disciples of John. But they become, some of them, disciples of Jesus. When you see depictions of John the Baptist, there are two typical sights. One is a finger pointing away from himself to Christ. It is the silent equivalent of, look, behold. The other image is often a lamb. And this language continues in the liturgy for centuries. Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. Pastors and other preachers are quite attached to this image of John, pointing away from himself pointing to Christ. And we are blessed here to have Pastor Peter's faithful biblical preaching pointing not to himself, but to Christ. For ten years now, more I think, maybe it's eleven this year. Especially with those words, Behold, the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. Behold is a little old-fashioned. The translations now say, Look! Look! The Lamb! Now in the ancient context, as in our speech today, a Lamb is the sacrificial Lamb. Look, the Lamb of God. Now this is not a sacrifice given to God. This is God's own sacrifice. That God's self-expression, that the Word of God should become flesh and enter this world of hardship and suffering, even unto death. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now we're beyond John's capacity. John preached repentance, but John could not bestow God's forgiveness. Forgiveness comes in Christ as the Lamb of God. As we read in the book of Revelation, washed clean in the blood of the Lamb. Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, not just for us individually or even us as a single community, it's for all for the world. Even Herod, or these evildoers in the text, assuming in John the Baptist's world, repented. <coughs> we sing these words almost every Sunday. Lamb of God, we take away the sin of Today's bulletin flies a version that is slightly expanded in its wording. The music 
can see in the fine print down below that says it's from setting number 10 in our evangelical Lutheran worship. There are 10 musical settings for the Lamb of God. And we rotate through them, through most of them. From the ancient Latin liturgy right through to today, we sing, O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. And in this book, there are more than those ten settings. There are another five settings available to us, and there are hymns. One comes from Luther's own time, an immediate colleague. Another comes from Paul Gerhardt, who gave us a sacred head now wounded. A lamb goes uncomplaining before us. Of course, the words were set by famous composers, too. Johann Sebastian Bach. We have one in our hymnal here by Schubert. But the story continues into present-day composers and usage. One of the settings is by someone born in 1970. I had to look at that twice. <laughs> born in 1970, that, that young. And it's in our hymn. Another is by a living composer, and it is our hymn of the day now. Twyla Paris sets and expands on the words, Lamb of God, with a twist. She knows that the scriptural message has a twist in the story. In the book of Revelation, it says the Lamb in the midst of the throne will become their shepherd. and lead to springs of living water. As in, the Lord is my shepherd, 23rd Psalm. The lamb is also the shepherd. And we are the sheep, or the lambs, of his flock. And it says, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Words of great comfort to those who mourn the dead. Today, or in this space recently, for Jan Wester or Matthew Rexrock. And she's put that twist into the third verse to be led by your staff and rod and to be called. The Lamb of God. For we are the sheep of his pasture and the people of his hand. Care to as a shepherd watches over his flock now and always. Continue with the hymn of the day.
confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. O oh God, you gather your people into the body of Christ. Where your church is wounded, heal it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is divided, reunite it. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. great. You send your spirit into this community of faith. Empower our ministries that serve and build up the community. Nurture our partnerships. And bless those at the ELCA youth gathering, especially Mo and Brody. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray to you, Almighty God, in this time of public violence and political strife. You are our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Support us and our whole country in the face of these events. Uphold us with your love, and give us the strength we need. Heal the injured, including Donald. Console the afflicted and those who mourn their dead. Protect the innocent, and shelter all those in such perilous situations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. All peoples praise you, O oh God. We give you thanks and praise for the lives of our loved ones who now rest in you, especially Jan Wester and Matthew Rexford. In the fullness of time, gather us with all your saints in light. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you.
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we received here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, you are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ will come again. again. Remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your church now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us join our hearts and voices and pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom of power the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ has set the table 
with more than enough for all. Come.
five. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bless you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. O Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for announcements. I am. Um, I think most of you know Joe knew the current president of the congregation, so it's my uh, joy to uh, do these things when Pastor Peter is away. Uh, Pastor Paul, we thank you for leading us in worship today and bringing us the good word. Um, and a few announcements, mostly just reminders. Um, the uh, uh, Trenton Thunder game, uh, July 20th, is coming up quick. Uh, there is a sign-up outside of the office. Uh, we'll be joining uh, our friends from St. Bart's for a night of fun and uh, hopefully a good game. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> but it'll be fun nevertheless. So um, please sign up and uh, Pastor Peter will be in touch about uh, payment and all that good stuff. Um, if you want to stay to the very end of the game, there's fireworks. My favorite. <laughs> um, Sunday, uh, August 11th coming up, we'll have another pulpit swap. Um, as part of our RIC uh, committee, uh, and I won't I'll butcher this uh, con, Pastor Margaret Oweji uh, from First Lutheran in Montclair will be coming here, and Pastor Peter will be going to Montclair. Uh, July is Mac and Cheese Month. <laughs> we just had the grandkids here. Dave made mac and cheese. They were so happy. <laughs> so let's make other kids happy and bring mac and cheese for St. Bart's Food Pantry. Uh, the Peace Garden always needs volunteers. The schedule's right here in the bulletin, so please uh, be aware of that. We are planning a refugee picnic on God's Work Our Hands. That is Sunday, September 8th. Uh, as many of you know, God's Work Our Hands is a program throughout the ELCA where uh, congregations uh, devote that day to uh, some project in their community. And, you know, uh, we all got the yellow shirts. Uh, if you don't have one, uh, see me. We have some extras. We can always order a few more. Uh, uh, and so our uh, project this year is to bring some refugees that are in the greater area uh, here for a picnic. Uh, good old-fashioned American picnic. Uh, I've uh, asked Doug to be the primary cook on the grill, and he said yes. So we are <coughs> on our way to the, the, our plans. Uh, if you have questions, you can see me, Nancy Reyes, or any of us on the racial justice team. We are leading the way. Uh, are there any other announcements? Okay, seeing none. Pastor Paul, benediction. Please rise for the benediction and sending him. The blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, sir.